Telling workshop. Um, how many of you are feeling good in this room, feeling confident, feeling like, yes, About this is what? awesome. Technology, all this technology around here, peace, prosperity, understanding. <laughs> how many, are there are people who might be like technophobe or feeling like, I don't know exactly what to do with all of this stuff. Anybody feeling that way or identify that way? Sometimes, depending on the situation. Good, good. All right, so um, let's get started. I want to get to know all of you a little bit better and um, show you a really amazing way to get feedback from your students. How many of you are actually classroom teachers or, okay, awesome, awesome, Sometime, or have student involvement, student interaction? Um, all right, cool. You can turn those iPads the right way up and um, press your home button and you'll see a folder of applications uh, called storytelling. You can tap on that folder and you'll see an application with a blue circle and some stats uh, that is poll everywhere. So go ahead and put that one more time. Sorry, awesome. So the folder is on that first home page um, right here, digital oh, storytelling. Hello. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> so, poll everywhere. <laughs> okay, Siri, how can I help? <laughs> Push the home button one more time. Yep, just press it once. Just tap. Push it again. Yeah. All right, press it one time. Don't hold it. Perfect. Some of these I gestural things, no. they really uh, are a learning curve. Like it has other apps inside of it. Yep, that's the Very, one. Yes. You got it. Perfect. So just just yep. tap. Awesome. Go. And then the white one with the blue circle is just pull everywhere. That's the one. Yep. You got it. All right. So now we're in the poll everywhere um, student view interface. And um, you can see on recent presentations, there's like a white stripe and then there's a blue stripe and it says recent presentations. You can tap that recent presentation button. Um, and then at the very top, you'll see a white stripe that says responding as. So go ahead and tap that responding as and change it to your name, your screen name, your initials, your dog's name, <laughs> something that feels personal to you. If you, if you have troubleshooting, I am happy to help. Okay, cool. So, um, oh, okay, so let's go to, um, I'll write it up here. If it says presenter not found, here's what you can enter. And this is all and then uppercase. So if you're not getting the recent presentations, this is what you can enter in the white bar. All right. I'll give you all a moment to, to get configured here. Um, oh, no, uh, it's on, this is only for oh. people who weren't able to get into the recent presentations. So your name in the, in the um, pres or responding as area. This is cool for you educators because the, um, the presenter view, you'll be able to sort responses by participant or see a general overview. And, um, I recommend this program just because it is amazing at drawing students who might feel that they don't have a voice or they feel uneasy speaking up in the classroom. They feel comfortable being able to type in their responses. Um, it's also a testing tool, and I've uh, if you like to use it that way. All right. So is everybody up, or anybody else need some troubleshooting here? Okay, great. So go ahead and start that survey. And um, the first is just a little welcome screen. At the bottom, you can press next. <laughs> Don't forget to um, say yes. Oh, actually, you're you're in good. Yeah, you're in good shape here. <laughs> yeah, you can keep on going. This is this is an interest survey for you. And just a little way to get to know each other. For those of you who are um, checking this out on live stream, this is 
um, a poll that's showing what your users are interested in, um, what kind of experiences they've had, and you can use multiple choice or fill in the blank and a lot of different options. A word cloud is another option. So um, I recommend just going out, going ahead and trying out the test. If you want to uh, test it, you can you can download it for free to test. Uh, questions. Yeah. Okay, it is not a question. You're right. That is a <laughs> statement. Um, and I thought I had edited that, but hey. Okay. So digital storytelling, um, this is just kind of an introduction, is a multimedia approach to telling a personal story. So uh, uh, you, multimedia can be photographs or uh, video or audio of any sort, whether you're using podcasts or audio books, um, and animation, etc. So something with a digital element. So what, what is the what question? Oh, what's the question? There's no real question. You can put in there, cool, or I disagree, or yeah. For the ranking, there's there's handles on the side of each option with the three lines, and you can drag the handles um, into whatever the rank you believe is correct for you. Great question. So iOS is an Apple-based platform. Um, so iPhone, iPad, um, and other tablets could be Android-based or another type, maybe Acer, etc. And then a Chromebook, is that what? A Chromebook is a small, like a net-based uh, laptop. So usually a little bit smaller than a usual laptop. Uh, with different functionality, mostly used to access the internet and word processing. It would be compared in the other tablet category. N uh, a Chromebook? Yeah, there's a Chromebook, yeah, there's a Chromebook category. Yep. Is there anyone else who didn't see what they use listed on there? Okay, can you read the uh, whole question? Seven, I'm mostly interested in learning how to integrate the arts into my classroom. Is that arts through technology? Um, yes, okay. considering this is a technology-based okay. class. Uh, <laughs> I'll just steer it that way, yeah. <laughs> So uh, from the instructor side, I see all of you are done, pretty much here. We're good. Okay, from uh, my the executive report here, um, I found that 40% of you identify with water. So we're mostly on the watery side here. 30% um, said fire, 20% um, said earth, and 10% of you, which is one person, <laughs> Is the air person? So whoever you are, you are unique. All <laughs> right, that's the truth. That's the truth. Um, if you were a fruit, what fruit would you be? Overwhelming majority of well, actually, it's a tiebreaker between apple. Three people chose apple. Three people chose peach, and um, 
two people choose, chose grapes. There's two grapes in here. And in our fruit salad, there is one banana. And I wonder if they are the air person. <laughs> nice. Nice. Nobody chose lemon. There are no lemons. No citrus in here at all. No citrus in here at all. All right. OK, digital storytelling is the art of telling your story, yes, and with a side of country gravy. Um, <laughs> you get all of the participant responses as well in a list. It's pretty sweet. Um, what kind of digital multimedia? Most of you use photographs. The next up is videos. The third ranking is music. Fourth is podcasts or audiobooks. And fifth is animation. So. Um, Let's see. And then the type of technology, most of you are using iOS tablets. Uh, next up is Apple laptops. Uh, third up is desktop computers or like a computer lab. Uh, for, or actually a tie between Chromebooks and PC laptops. And then I don't think anybody chose other tablets here. Um, and then your all most interested in telling a story using digital means. And you're in a perfect place <laughs> to do that. So um, awesome. Um, in digital storytelling, the way that I teach it, I use these poles for us to devise a storyline using story arc. Um, so each of these is, is our, what, what age is our main character? Or what are the attributes of our main character? What kind of things do they struggle with? What's their, um, what's their you know, uh, challenge? So um, let's just get started with an application. So go ahead and press your home button one more time. And uh, maybe turn to your partner, or turn to somebody next to you, shake their hand, and get to know them. You'll be partners here for just a second. So, so choose someone next to you to be your partner. He is allowed to be your partner. Okay. There's, yeah, ten total. So that should equal out to five groups of two. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> Question. Um, so the only person who needs to make an, an account is the poll giver. Uh, the people who are downloading the app, it's free and um, does not require a log, like it doesn't require a login. So you can download the app and participate from anywhere that you're at. Yeah. Right. For J, um, there is if it's free, you can download it. So she might have to talk to the tech guys first. Yep. But you should be able to get on your own. The, I know, I'm right. the same thing. Tech, <laughs> tech yeah, yeah, and I understand. And this is this is a real a serious thing that that I know uh, myself as a, a female tech educator, I run into that a lot. Tech guy, sound guy, you know, where's the sound guy? I'm like, I'm, I can help you. Um, <laughs> but but it's an interesting uh, an interesting question and one that's worth asking. Um, just for the record, at our place, it's a dude. Tech dude. <laughs> Although, if you're um, at Kelly Middle School, your tech specialist is female. So I was like, give her a big high five on that one. <laughs> um, awesome. So here we go. That, I don't know, did I answer your question? OK, great. And it's a free download. Um, also, what you might want to talk to uh, your tech specialist is self-service. Self-service is a way for uh, students to be able to download pre-approved apps um, on specific pieces of software, uh, uh, hardware, excuse me. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So um, go ahead and access your camera, which if you're on the digital storytelling folder, you'll have to press the home button one more time. The camera looks like a camera mm -hmm. icon. So. The gestures do take time to, to figure out a little bit. Well, they go to sleep very quickly. Yeah, yeah, to save power. Um, 
All right, now that you're on the camera, go ahead and um, your partner will take a picture of you from the right-hand side. It's okay, don't worry. It's okay, trust me. It's gonna be okay, trust me. Just from this side. Profile. Like an actual profile picture. Like it has to be a profile though. So that you can get, yeah. It does, it does. Yet, can you put yet in there? I don't know how to use these things yet. But, okay. Did everybody get a chance to get a picture of their partner's profile? Awesome. Um, great. All right, your next step is to go uh, press the home button and uh, in the digital storytelling folder, there is an app that looks like a painter's palette and that's you doodle, so go ahead and tap on that. Um, it's in the digital storytelling folder, right? You might come up with a screen with something on it. It's okay, it's okay. Um, Everybody logged in? Everybody find it? I know, a nice little chicken. All right. So, okay. Um, your next step is to go to File, and that's on the top right hand corner, and Import. Uh, when it, it says New, and you'll want to choose Draw on Top of a Photo. And then you can choose Camera Roll. Okay, um, so I can change your settings options here just as a, a cool team. All right, so uh, actually I'll have you do it. <laughs> press, uh, yeah, press the home button one more time and go to settings. And then it will be in, I believe it's privacy. And Solid camera. Correct, and then activate you Doodle Pro. You just like did it. Summer, nice work. I don't do it because I can't. I do it because I choose not. <laughs> exactly. Great. So, so now let's go check that out. Nothing outrageous. Right. I know. I try. Middle school is an interesting place. Um, so, right. There's a few hundred pictures of me in there. Um, all right. So once you're on your camera roll, everybody able to access the camera roll? Or okay, cool. Um, then find your profile picture. Or, your, uh, or if you want to trade with your partner so you do your, you're doing your own, you can. If you want to do your partner's, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Um, cool. So here you are with your profile, right? Or me trying to take my own picture in my room. So um, uh, to crop, you can grab any one of the handles on the side here and crop it so that you get all the action and none of the background. Great. Once you got it to a good point, you can press done on the top right hand corner. <laughs> hey, uh, how do I get back to those tools once I crop it if I want to crop it again? Um, hmm. I guess I would just file import crop again. So file import crop. I'm not sure I'm doing anything. Okay. How can I help? Tell my Aha. So let's see. We've got. I figure it's something that's supposed to go something like that. There it is. It certainly is. So I see that there are some handles here, but I think what happened is maybe the um, frame got really big. So let's let's cancel and re-import file import. Go on top. Excellent camera roll. Right here. <laughs> 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 Go 
great. And let's see if we got something. Okay, oh, now you can grab the handles on the edge. Okay, cool. All right, everybody good? Any questions here? All right, sweet. So your next step is um, to go to the layers in this top uh, bar and then redundantly pick layers again. Um, if you see your photo in the background, it's in the right spot. If you see your photo in the foreground, you'll want to choose the swap option so that your photo is in the background. Um, How did you get there again? Uh, so to get to this, you choose layers on this uh, top bar, and then choose layers again. Layers, layers. <laughs> layers upon layers. Great. Um, once you've got that in the background, you can press done. Your next step is to go to the brush on the, on the bottom left-hand corner and tap that till you get some options. And this uh, top area, you can choose either through a color picker if you want a solid color up here. Um, this is what the color picker kind of looks like. Or um, any of these uh, patterns. Choose one of those. This will go uh, as the line that will be around the around your profile. Oh. <laughs> so this um, this is where you'll pick what color or pattern your the line around your profile will be. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's the brush icon on the very left corner. Great. Awesome. Now, this is the fun part. You can um, pinch to make it smaller or, or uh, expand with two fingers to navigate your portrait. And with one finger, um, or if you prefer, I, c I have a few styluses available, um, trace the outside of your profile. If you want to undo, you made a mistake, there is a, um, an undo button in the top left-hand corner. Yeah. If anyone wants a stylus, just let me know, because I can, yeah. Here. Sure, there you go. Um, the undo button is on the top left-hand corner. Oops. Correct. You will, it will take you back one step so that you can either uh, redo a line or choose a different color. You'll want to create a closed um, area. Yeah. All right. Theater people are loud over there. <laughs> Some things never change. <laughs> All right. So, um, is everybody ready to move on to the next step? Does it need to be closed on the bottom too? Uh, yes. It need to be fully enclosed. Oh. Correct. All right, if you have a fully enclosed line, is anybody still working on their little line or need some more time for the line? Okay, sure. Oh yeah, there you go. There are some settings in there for the... <laughs> For the width of the uh, brush.
right, and I'll, I'll retell this for people who need a little extra time, but for those of you who are ready to move on to the next step, um, go to fill, which is the fourth option from the left, and tap it so that you can choose, again, from the options, uh, a color or pattern that you'd like to fill your silhouette with. No, it'll be filling the foreground of the inside of your silhouette. So it'll be long on top of their face? Correct. Oh, yeah. So I didn't, what I see is that I did not, I did not cut in close enough to her face. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You get that. Yeah, that's a learning process. Yeah. All right. Cool. You should have something that's <laughs> a little like this at I this point. Oh, wait, how did you do that? Color. Is that okay. Um, here, let me help. <laughs> okay. Look, I tapped in this one. This one, I got black and white. I tapped this one, and I got gray. Oh, okay. So it's kind of looking like. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I was Your no, Hint so. was off to yeah. a what? Oh, yeah. Okay. So there, this one's a little deep. At this point, I just try to teach what what works, but okay. these little things are fine. This okay. should work now. Okay. So now I go to done. done. Exactly. And, just tap and then it. tap in the center. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. That looks great. All right. Did you have a question? No, I think I got it. But <laughs> it is. That's the tint. If it, you go to the the invisible, then you'll have okay. what it shows here. Okay, so there's an option that I had to unselect. Um, in the fill menu, where it says color replace entire image. image. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right? Way to troubleshoot and way to work together. This is awesome. And this is also something that you can use, utilize in your classroom if there's some high performance learners. Give them that option to be a peer leader and say, oh, can you go help uh, them over there with this question? And then, you know, also helps you be able to facilitate. Right? <laughs> All right, so final step here. Um, we'll go to the layers option and change background. This is where I usually have the students choose blank because um, afterwards I'll animate all of their silhouettes together. Uh, so just as you can, you can choose blank or uh, whatever you like, but you end up with an image like this. Uh, then you'll choose another option and see how it turns out. So it'll it'll preview the blank and hit done. Yeah. Boom. But that, no, we're, that is exploration, and that's a really great way to learn an application. Yeah. So checking in here, we're at 140. Um, cool, awesome, <laughs> did it. We did this, and we did it on time. <laughs> so give yourselves a nice round of applause because you just did it. Beautiful, you've made a silhouette. Um, this is also awesome if you're working with a group of students and you don't know if they have photo or video releases. So you can still create this, and it won't. It will still protect their com confidentiality. Um, just, well, that was. Thank you for the idea. Oh. Yeah. You're welcome. Yep. <laughs> Question. Okay. How can I help? Option to to fill in the picture, uh -huh. and then fill with blue. Uh -huh. But it, but it filled everything. And she helped so, me with the gaps. There we go. It had a. a a setting for color to replace entire image. Oh, so that. yeah, and I I think you know a student has probably 
um, done that for your convenience and ease. I'm so, happy. Uh, <laughs> so you're you should be able to tap in the center the there. So, um, uh, okay. Done. Done. Yeah. Perfect. And now you should be able to tap, and it should work for you. All right. Awesome. Good job. Nice work. Okay. Got it. Right on. All right. So. Um, Cool. Yeah, that is uh, is a, a 299 app. That's one of the only paid apps that we have. All right, let's move on to a another application and get to explore that. <laughs> so here we go. Um, go ahead and um, press the home button. If you'd like to erase your image at this point from the camera roll, you can. Um, that's a pretty pretty simple process of going to the camera roll. Uh, selecting your image, I'm just going to, uh, no, let's see, selecting your image, <laughs> selecting your image and uh, pressing the trash can at the top right to delete the photo. There you go. All gone. Cool. All right. Oh, let's see. So our next application uh, will be the one that looks like little golden quotation marks in the digital storytelling folder. It's called Adobe Spark Video. If you um, log in and you see an open student project, it's okay. Just go ahead and go to the home button on the top left. And you should get to a screen like this. So let me get to that screen as well. <laughs> awesome. All right. So if you're at a, a screen that looks like this, you are in the right place. Awesome. The catathater. Yes, this is pretty fun. Uh, the student's been rocking it on the, the meow meow. Um, <laughs> Cool, here we go. Um, let's create our own multimedia. This app is amazing. It's so hands-on, it's so interactive. It's really easy for um, students who have a lot of, you know, who are not feeling as tech savvy. They feel empowered with this app. And besides that, it's cross-platform. If you're using uh, Chromebooks, if you're using um, other kind of technology, it even has a desktop application that looks a lot like this. Mm -hmm. The only difference is that it's not touchscreen unless your laptop specifically is touchscreen. Um, it's another way to blend different sources of multimedia as well. So uh, photos, videos, sound, um, icons, uh, so let's just dive in. This is the best way to learn. So um, at the very bottom of your screen, you'll see a red plus. So let's. what's your story about? If you didn't delete your um, profile, you can use that as one of your photos. Um, but what's your story about? You can put a title in there if you want to put like my element or <laughs> et cetera. This is use your creativity. Sure. Giraffes. Anybody read that book, Giraffes, Giraffes? Giraffes? <laughs> giraffes. It's so good. It's like, well, that's the title of the book. It's an amazing book. Um, all right. Once you've entered a title, uh, you'll come up with a few templates that you can use. These templates are useful if um, people like to have a structure to fit their content into. Otherwise, if you're more of a, you're, you're thinking more outside the box, you can start from scratch. Um, no wrong answer here. These have prompts. If you pick a, if you pick a template, they have prompts to help you through. I'm going to start from scratch here. If you want to change your mind, then you'll go to the home button. Um, and there's a back arrow on the top left corner that's a red back arrow. Did that answer your question? Or do you? All right, can I help? 
All right. Awesome. So let's see. Yeah. Um, you wanted to edit what kind of yeah, template. theme or template? Mm -hmm. Layout All right. Theme. So um, no, themes is a little different. So go ahead and go back to the home button if you want to, if you want to change it. And, um, and here you go. You can choose here. Any of these are themes that you can use. And there's no wrong answer here. So um, if, it, if something feels right and fits, um, well, you can choose there. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Well, don't worry. Start from scratch is fine, and and we'll walk through how to add okay. multimedia. Okay, good. Perfect. You're in a good spot. All right. Cool. If you are here, you are in the right place. Um, a quick guided tour. So this home button on the top left will bring you back to your projects. It's also a save. So if you're working on a project, you'll want to go ahead and hit and want to take a break, hit the home button and you'll see your project listed on the list of projects, which is where you found all the CAD information. So yeah, that's, that's <laughs> that. Um, the next option up here is a layout option. So tap that and this will be your, your slide layout. You can change the slide layout for each slide if you like. Um, and there's a few options here. Uh, this could be a good title screen. I'm going to choose the um, full screen with a caption at the bottom. You can choose whatever you like, whatever speaks to you. All right. Um, once you've got a layout chosen, anybody else need some help on anything? Or? Great. That looks good. No, not yet. Um, we're still going across the top. You just chose a, chose a, um, a layout for the specific uh, slide. So here's these are some more global functions. So that will take care of the entire slideshow, and then we'll get into each specific slide functions. Um, yeah, sweet. All right, cool. Your next um, option across the top is themes. This is where you can pick some background colors and fonts that you like. The one that has the mountain on it will be the one that is selected. Once you've chosen a theme, we're going to skip over resize. Resize is, is simply if you want it in the square or if you want it in a, um, a rectangle. But um, the next option on top here is music. And this is Creative Commons licensed music that you can use without worrying about copyright infringement. Um, any one of these is fine. You can also upload your own music. If you're a music educator, you're working in GarageBand, you've got a recording that you want to use, um, that's, that's an option on the very end. If you, sc you can scroll across the top, left and right here, and um, go ahead and, and um, tap on a few of these to, to check out what they sound like and see if any of them speak to you. Yeah, but they'd probably want to just record for each slide. You can also adjust the volume there as a slider in the, in the, um, underneath the titles of the songs. Right here is your volume adjust. <laughs> right. right, this is the, this is the creative chaos of it all. Also an option for each slide, you can choose a different song for each slide, it might be a little chaotic, but, um, but you can also delete the music option if you'd rather it be a more focused on vocals kind of piece. And uh, to, do, to delete, um, you'll just go to the music option and then press the garbage can on the left hand side. You'll just, um, you'll just have that tap. Uh, as long as that's selected, that will be the music that will play in the background. So how do I stop it from making noise? Um, you, Go out of music? No. Um, you, if you want it to stop it, OK, so I'm tired of listening to this, you'll see to the very left, there's a, a square, and that will stop the preview. OK. So uh, if I had this on my phone, and I 
have it on my laptop because maybe that's true. Sure. Um, I, but I haven't <laughs> played with it yet because I just discovered this on my laptop. So uh, would that be an easy thing? I'm assuming like if I if I want to just make it really simple, like oh, picture picture on my phone. It's gonna save in this project, but I want to do the editing on my laptop. Like, is is it a nice like my one account is gonna allow me to use both those things? Your one account, all all of your projects will show up mm -hmm. in the one account that you've logged in with. Mm -hmm. It is a free account. It's mm -hmm. an Adobe account, mm -hmm. um, and all of the projects, just like you've seen, all of these are logged onto the same account. So you'll see every single project that's been being created. Um, like that, like is it is it pretty like can it can it be like okay I'm working my laptop I want this photo over here from the phone yeah add in and then it's gonna show up beautifully on the laptop quickly that should not be a problem because the login will be cross across all of the devices that you use um, the editing specifically on a photo or a video I would recommend editing in the camera app. Mm -hmm. itself uh, or iMovie or another application, saving it as an edited version and then importing that into your final project. So uh, it gets mm -hmm. a little deep, but as long as you can, can think about it in that way, it will show up on, on different devices. Uh, that sounded like your question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like it. I like it. Awesome, like it. awesome. All right, let's move on. Let's add some content here. Um, so anywhere that there's a plus, you can add content. Uh, since I chose a title at the bottom, um, I can type in any text here. So I'll say my element. And then um, if you uh, would like to input a photo, you'll tap the plus in the center and tap photo. Here's where we have a, a few options to choose from, depending on what your school allows uh, for search. Um, of course, there's the on my iPad option where you can access your camera roll. Um, that would, that's a pretty cool one. <laughs> I'm gonna use one of, Ooh, well, you can change the background here. Another option that's really powerful is another Creative Commons licensed search tool for high resolution images that you can use without worrying about copyright. Again, um, this find free photos on the top left hand corner. And you can search a, a term here. Let's just say I wanted to look up fire. And then you can choose from a few curated photos, what applies to your slide the most. <laughs> you can also take a picture through this application if you'd like. You'll have to um, allow access to the camera for the application. Um, you can do it how you feel. <laughs> um, a note about choosing video. You will only be able to access video that's locally on your device. So that means if it's in your camera roll, you can use it. So how you get it into your camera roll is you can use the camera. Um, if you are allowing download of videos, um, then whatever shows up in your camera roll, you can use in in this option. Like if you email a video out to all your students, 
and they download it, you'd be able to use that. Another option here is a voice recorder. Underneath the frame, you'll see a microphone with a red button. This is where you can record your own narration for each slide. So um, here's a demo. My element is fire. To play back your recording, um, you can go. My element is fire. Is uh, go to this play option right underneath the the um, slide here. Uh, and if you'd like to re-record, you can simply press that button again to re-record over the recording that you already made. And finally, on the bottom, um, or actually at the very right-hand corner, you'll see um, a small gray dot that has a number and S next to it if you have a, have a narration. This is where you can either adjust the timing of your slide if you don't have a narration, or you can remove the narration altogether if you'd like. Um, the small, um, yeah, the small, uh, on the very right hand side under the slide is, is the slider of how long your duration of the slide is. If you're using a lot of text, I usually um, uh, recommend students increase the time for each slide if they're using text. What do you think is, what's a good average you know, for how long the slide, like how long would you let a slide play if it had a couple words on it? Depends on the comprehension level of the people using it, um, and it's absolutely dependent on your content. So you'll you'll know when you watch it. And here's uh, uh, how you watch your entire slideshow, just to gauge the pacing and all of this. Um, is at the very bottom you'll see a slides viewer. Um, here's where you can edit each individual slide for duplicating or or deleting. Um, you can also preview your entire slideshow by pressing at the bottom slides viewer um, this play button or if you started from scratch here's also where you can add a new slide at the the right hand side of the bottom of the slides viewer um, I believe it's pretty much unlimited. Usually people's presentations end up being um, in the minutes range rather than the hours range. So um, I have not tested the exact capability of how long you can make something, but I think as long as your memory uh, has, has space. Um, the transition based on, of the slides is taken care of within the app. It's one of those those ways that they make it a little stream streamline it for people. Yeah. Um, there are not yeah, there's not an option to change your transitions or anything. Well, like like there is in Keynote. I don't know if that's what you're using usually. They have some awesome trans transitions in Keynote actually. Congratulations, you've just made an Adobe Spark video. Give yourself a nice round of applause. You have now, already within this hour, used two different applications and learned your way around them. So um, you should feel good about yourself and your tech ability. Uh, let's see, we've got actually 10 minutes left. And I wanted to gauge how people are doing if you have questions about and where you want to take it next. Because in 10 minutes, I could teach you one more app, or we could go over some Q&A, or we can talk about how responsible use of technology in the classroom, or whatever you want to talk about. So um, 
Let's, let's poll here. Who wants to learn another app? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, sounds like another app is the way to go. Um, I want to teach you one that is a perennial favorite with the students. Um, that's a frame-by-frame animation software. Um, go ahead and press your home button. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Um, okay, and uh, in the digital storytelling folder, you'll look for, it's a white icon with a, almost like a film roll on it, and it's called Flip a Clip. Y'all. Y'all. <laughs> Right. Here we go. And um, let's see. Do we have a few more? Everybody get a stylus that wanted one. I think I have a couple more, but I don't know where I put them, so never mind. Ha ha. I could give you mine if you want. Yeah. Do you have any lessons or templates that you have students use that are available online for Adobe Spark, like the, the storytelling that they're going to do? Absolutely. Those the templates that you saw on in the beginning are also available on the desktop version. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty similar um, okay. using it using it here and there. Okay. Those templates, um, if any of you used a template, you'll see that the prompts will pop up for them if they're trying to tell a story and, okay. and what would happen on each slide. Um, and those will be continuous whether they're on the iOS device or whether they're on um, a computer. Okay. All of it's free, too. So I really love that app. It's great for a presentation. It's great for teaching tools, too. Um, if you want to give a, a short presentation that students are pretty engaged with, uh, I, I just, yeah, I love it. Um, all right, so flip a clip. Here we go. If you're on this screen, you're in the right place to get started. On the very bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see a plus, a red plus. Go ahead and tap that. Just like before, you'll name your animation. Your next option is to choose a background. And you can choose a background from uh, any of the ones that are selected here, uh, scenes or paper or patterns. But you can also use a photo as your background. Just FYI, this will be continued through the entire clip. So um, something that really fits for the animation itself. Um, there's also an option for you to choose a cost custom color, and that's the paint bucket icon that's on the right. Um, a note about the color picker. On the outside is the hue, and on the inside is the tint. So um, if you choose you know, the red, but your tint is all the way down to the black corner, you'll still get a black. So um, the preview right here, the preview, will be where your actual final color would be. There are a few presets, too. Yeah, go for it. Um, there are a few presets, too. So if you want to continue using a color palette or make a color palette of your own, um, depending on your uh, level of students and how much you want to customize, um, you can do that at the top. Um, I'm a little unclear on what the question is. How can I help? How do I know? How do I keep it set there? Is it just set? Yeah, you can press uh, check. Okay. All right. Your next option is to choose your canvas size. Um, it's set on the YouTube 720 pixels, which is a pretty decent web uh, size. If you want to get a little more high definition, you can choose the 1080 pixels, which is basically the width of a normal web page. Um, and there are a few other social media style options here. Instagram Square, the 16 by 9. We don't need to get into that. Um, <laughs> but I think the YouTube 720p is usually a good fit for most projects. Your next option, and this one's the kicker, this is the most important one, is your frames per second, or FPS. So um, if you tap that, you'll come up with a bouncing ball that'll show you what your frames per second will look like in your final animation. Um, you can go up to 30 frames per second, and that's like 
video quality or down to one frame per second, which is uh, very blocky transitions, but you'll get the point across um, with the minimal amount of having to draw. I usually recommend students go somewhere in the 10 to 15 range um, because it's a nice happy medium between quality and the amount of work that it's needed to create a really nice looking frame by frame. However, I've seen students that just, they love it, they want the 30 frames per second and they'll, they'll do the work. Um, 11, 12, it's pretty good. Is that an airplane? Wow, all right. Uh, once you've chosen your frames per second, go ahead and press that check and you're ready to create your project. Um, I'm sorry, I got the free version, which means I have um, advertisements. You have the paid version, it is $2.99, not expensive, but you can use the free version if you don't mind being advertised at. All right, here we go. Um, everybody here or anybody need some help? Okay, good, we're here. Um, these are your tools. First off, your tool is a pen, but you can change that if you tap the pen one more time, you'll see a few options. You can use a pencil or a brush or a highlighter. Within the toolbar, um, you can uh, adjust the width of the line by tapping in the center circle and dragging up or down to where you want your line width to be. And then the last option in the pen is, is a color picker. Again, hue on the outside, tint on the inside. And go ahead and, and draw something and have some fun. I'm gonna be really creative and draw a triangle here. Awesome. I'm gonna keep explaining these tools. You can keep drawing if you'd like. Um, the next option is an eraser option. Um, students love to go wild with the eraser, They'll, um, but there are some options that will keep you from wasting time. Um, if you just want to erase a slide, kind of like Adobe Spark video, on the bottom is a slides viewer, and you can uh, select a slide, and there will be slide options on the bottom if you want to erase an entire slide. Um, but if you'd let, rather use an eraser to erase a small part of a drawing, um, in the eraser options, you can again drag to find, um, great. Okay, so uh, we are rounding up on the final minute here. So um, quickly, I just wanna show you one really powerful tool left in this, in this um, option here is the, lasso tool. So if you choose the lasso in the center of the toolbox, you can draw all the way around your image. And with the handles on the corners, you can adjust the size. You can also, um, the long rectangular, you can flip your image from side to side or um, up to down. And with the uh, handle at the very top, you can rotate your image. How did you do that one more time? Um, you'll press the uh, lasso option in the center okay. and draw a circle or a square around what you want mm -hmm. to affect. Wow. Is there a way to copy an image? Because I'm seeing like as you create slides, it's showing you what you had previously. Correct. Is there a way to copy that previous one so that you're not redrawing the same? Oh, yeah, I yes, that too. there is. The yep, there is. So um, your copy option is linked to the um, lasso. So you'll want to lasso it first, and then up on the top right-hand corner, you'll see two sheets of paper stacked, and that is your copy. You'll know that it's copied when the clipboard appears. All right, so um, I have to wrap this up right now, but um, finally you can create a new slide on the bottom, just like the slides viewer, and press paste, and there you go. So thank you so much, and thanks to Mozilla and Lane Arts Council for being um, hosting this presentation. Thank you so much for being a part of it, and um, enjoy. May the tech be with you. <laughs>
Oh, that was so, so wonderful. Yeah.